I dropped out of my first university and then I dropped out of my second university and my mom still asked me, when are you going back to school? That's still a topic of conversation once a week. My parents wanted me to get into a good high school in order to get into a good college, in order to become a doctor or a lawyer, and having the whole first 30 something years of my life planned out and mapped out for me never really sat well with me. And I guess for me, being an entrepreneur was kind of my way of rebelling. <laughs> I don't believe in education, I believe in learning. I hate education. People learn in all sorts of different ways, and I think the real failure in the system, which really needs to change, is that the programs are not necessarily tailored to individuals, but tailored to broadcasting information. I had one leg of an elephant, and it really wouldn't matter where you grabbed on. The thing is enormous. It's hard to be able to explain why some commoditized knowledge, such as the geometry which hasn't changed in 2,000 years. How could those textbooks cost between $150 and $200 a piece? The answer was to create super high quality digital textbooks that were freely downloadable. We saw that schools were spending millions of dollars wiring the dorm rooms and the classrooms to the internet, and yet they weren't spending any money on software to make that useful for teaching and learning. We thought, wow, imagine if all these schools used our technology to fundamentally improve the way they're teaching and learning. I would expect kids to be learning everything in the future through interacting with far richer, if you like, digital worlds in these areas. That's where we need to take education to, in my opinion. At the Media Lab, we have a, a lab called Lifelong Kindergarten. It's kindergarten kids are better at being innovative and they can come up with really creative solutions. What happens is after kindergarten, you start education, which is basically an obedience school to start to learn to behave, to do as you're told, to give the answers, and you really start losing innovation. Most teachers get into education because they want to do something great for the kids. They don't want to be babysitting or, or doing this discipline thing. We help teachers, parents, and students uh, build positive behavior and character strengths, things like creativity or curiosity or persistence. We shouldn't have textbooks in grammar school. We should give them this bulletproof, shatterproof, waterproof reader that comes from India and it's less than $65 and you can load 250 textbooks in there or anything you want. You can change the content instantaneously. You don't have to have a republication. You don't have to keep buying stuff all the time. It, it's just crazy. The professor will actually get paid more uh, in a digital book scenario. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one sale. The professor isn't making a royalty on the used book. They've always allowed publishers to give them the measly 10%, uh, and the publishers would take the rest, even though the knowledge that was created in this book was simply almost all the professors. Traditional academic institutions that require a presence on, on college have a number of constraints that make them eligible for the top 1%, and they leave out the bottom 99%. When we take this uh, medium and make it available digitally, we can reach these people. We reach people in the hospital bed, we reach people in Afghanistan on the battlefield, we reach people in Africa. We had more students in Lithuania than Stanford had students as a whole. Senator Steinberg put in a bill early this year saying that if a student couldn't find any of these bottleneck courses at any of the California institutions, we're going to allow an online provider, a MOOC, to have a shot at giving this student a path to completion and getting a credit, and thus getting accreditation. It's very threatening to the universities. It's extremely threatening to the faculty. But students, however, I think, uh, are kind of looking for a different path. You can't yet get a degree through any of these massive online uh, course environments. But you know, what we started to see just this year was we now have our very first few courses that you can get credit for. And that's, that's the first step. Blackboard is one of the most trusted institutions for teachers out there. And the fact that Blackboard would say they're going to use open source material for teachers and others to pull their material together, huge, huge announcement. We ended up taking the company public in 2004, had a $400 million market cap. In November of 2011, we sold the company for $1.7 billion. I stayed on board for a year, and when I left, the company was worth just over $2 billion. We can democratize education. We can bring education to the world so that the world can be educated much better. This is a vision that's unbelievably strong.